Bill, thanks very much for attending here today with Peter Delaney here, a farmer, a client of ours here in uh, Kilnall, Tipperary. I suppose we're here today to talk about um, uh, a change in farms where we see um, a big change towards automatic feeders and use in, fa in farms, in dairy farms and in calf to beef, sy calf to beef systems as well. And Peter, uh, like many of our clients, has uh, installed a JSC system this year. And I suppose we'll just kind of get a bit of advice from yourself on um, the management of the systems in terms of the powder and feeding rates and your thoughts on the whole, the system as a, as a, as a whole. I suppose, look, thanks a million for inviting us up, lads. It's, it's always great, a busy time of the year to get invited onto farm and just see exactly what's happening. Yeah, look, Labour is driving this whole thing, really. And I suppose just chatting with Peter earlier there uh, when we were setting up was that he's probably doing the basics right. So calving the cows, plenty of straw, clean straw around, uh, scarcity this year. Uh, and also that he's making sure that those calves get colostrum very, very quickly um, and at the right volume. And also that then he's maintaining that for the next five, six, seven days, get in that transition build to give the calf the best stuff that he can. They're the basics and look, we can't be basics really, Mike. Yeah, from my point of view and just chatting to Peter over the last few days, uh, even when arriving today now, you see calves quite content, lying down a nice clean bed of straw in a nice well-ventilated shed. And by and large, even from Peter and Peter might add in as well, um, quite content with the, the system, I suppose. It's just, it's a learning curve for everyone, vets and farmers and getting used to the system in terms of the feeding curves and the rates on the on the machines. And with the, the huge number of different milk replacer products on the market, I suppose it can be a bit confusing at times and trying to pick a good one versus a, 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 a middle of the road quality versus a high quality versus poor quality. So um, with Peter's system there now, the calves have, been introduced onto it after being on whole milk for the first couple of days and and how are you finding the change Peter when they come onto the feeder? It's fine um the first day is probably the hardest getting them to yeah. adapt to the feeder Feed you know yeah. yeah and but after the first feed or two to off to come right. in the morning and all the lights are green on the feeder yeah, yeah. 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 that's what you want you know? that's, that's that's exactly what you want yeah you, you can see here now on the cars behind us they're all lined down they've all had a feed they've, we've checked the numbers on the system there and everything is, has had a full uh full quantity got already today they're they're doing quite well uh, from the veterinary point of view where we see changes or maybe problems with the systems there the the teeth end qualities um the different sizes and shapes of the teats and then that that affects the feeding rates we've had instances in the past where calves were getting fed too quickly and we've had bloat and we've had colic in calves and I suppose that's something that, from our point of view, I know what, what you find is the best size of teeth hens to be using. Yeah, I suppose, look, from a nutritional point of view, Michael, what I'm always saying is trying to use maximum two mil nipple. Okay. Um, and if you look at the difference there between a two mil and a four mil, like, it does a fair flow of milk out yeah. to it all. So literally two mil, that's as close you're going to get to the size of the average cow's teeth. Okay. Um, so try and keep it at two mil. Okay, you might restrict the numbers that you'll be able to put on the feed station. Yeah. But look, then probably area floor space dictates that as well. So the two mil is the ideal one. So from so. from point, Peter's point of view, with the teeth end that he's using is the, is the right size, the two mil. Yes. If if the calves are, if there's a small bit of a queue for calves to get a feed, you'd actually accept that rather yes. than calves getting fed too quickly, getting digestive up to upsets, getting colic and bloat and things like that. So a small bit of a weight at the feeder station yeah. is acceptable. Yeah. If the calves are getting it fed, at a, at a steady rate as opposed to too fast yeah I, I, I've, I've been in one or two farms where you'll see towards the end of the season and we all, all get tired and maybe things get missed but when a calf comes off a feeder and if you still see milk coming out through the teeth and you know what the teeth the, the opening is too is too big yeah. it's yeah. too patent it's, the milk is coming out far too fast yeah. and you'll get calves then they they're just taking it in too quick yeah and also <laughs> if you see it there that a calf that he's slow to leave the feeder when his milk allocation is down that means that he hasn't got enough of a suck okay. reflex uh, so that his jaws are tired that he'll actually go away so then again that has probably not generated enough of saliva um, to clot the milk properly and to aid digestion yeah. and to minimise bloat and stuff like that as well. In, in, a, in a simple way and I was talking to Peter about it I like to see when a calf comes off the feeder a small bit of a kind of a, what I call a milk froth yeah. around, around the teeth and around the station it's the floor isn't covered in it but there's a bit of milk froth around the station the calf has done a bit of physical work to get in his feed yes. but he's gotten it in an adequate amount of time 